I'd like to take a moment and thank today's sponsor, Haggard Pharmacy. If your horse is struggling from ulcers from time to time, they've got some good news for you. Reline GI by Haggard has a new and improved formula, and scientific studies show that it definitely improves gut health. So what's new about Reline GI is made with a new beta glucan that stimulates the immune system to work on targeted areas of horse's stomach. Plus, there's also a new price that can save you nearly $100 a gallon. Visit resolveit.com, R-E-S-O-L-V-E-T.com to learn more about the new Reline GI. A link will be in the description of this video. Uh, they started in Colombia, South America, which would be something like a, a market, maybe like Italy yeah, nowadays, yeah, or yeah. Germany, where yeah. it's more of a social aspect. But with anything that's social, there's an industry behind it. Right. Yeah. And uh, they were breeders, trainers, jockeys, owners, and uh, obviously they took care of their own horses. And, and, and you got the gene. And <laughs> you know, I, I give a lot of credit to, to you guys who are what I feel are true definition of the word horseman. You guys Thank are you. on the farm. You guys raise these things from the get-go uh, and have your hands on them through the whole process. My grandfather, my uncles, and those before them, those are amazing horsemen. For some reason, through the how amazing DNA works, Wait. I inherited something from my grandfather. You got the bug. The bug <laughs> and the ability to look at a horse and have a connection with it. Welcome to Holly Dorenzo's Leading the Way podcast. Here we are at OBS March Mixer. We call it the Mar March Mixer because we're mixing buyers, sellers, everybody together with a nice little cocktail Help. party. You <laughs> Help. <laughs> but it is the uh, March 2024 two-year-old training sale just kicking off. With us today is Romero, because I'm not going to say Ramirez, <laughs> Romero Restrepo, and... Uh, we're going to give him a hard time today on the podcast. <laughs> Not that. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, he I'm says. Ready. Okay. <laughs> so you know what, Romero? You've been, as as we know you, you've been everywhere and in and, and every aspect of this. But I really want to, I want our viewers and our listeners to know where you started, how you grew up, and how you got into the thoroughbred industry. Sure. Uh, day one, the fifth generation horse. Really? Day one. Wow. My great great, my great my grandfather, my uncles, my yeah. mother, uh, all on the third business. Wow. Is this. wow. Yeah. Uh, they started in Colombia, South America, which would be something like a, a market maybe like Italy yeah. nowadays yeah. or yeah. Germany, yeah. where mm -hmm. it's more of a social aspect. But with anything that's social, there's an industry behind it. Right. Yeah. And uh, they were breeders, trainers, jockeys, owners, and uh, obviously they took care of their own horses. Yeah. And, and you and, got the gene. And, <laughs> you know, I, I give a lot of credit to, to you guys who are what I feel are true definition of the word horsemen. You guys uh, are you. on the farm. You guys raise these things from the get-go uh, and have your hands on them through the whole process. My grandfather, my uncles, and those before them, those are amazing horsemen. For some reason, through the how amazing DNA works, Wait. I inherited something from my <clears throat> grandfather. You got the bug. <laughs> the bug and the ability to look at a horse and have a connection with it. And, and get that feeling. And get that feeling. Right. Because there's a passion involved in this oh, business. Yeah. Um, and it's not just something you can learn. It's like an artist who can paint a picture. And I, he couldn't teach me to paint a picture. <laughs> <No>. but, <laughs> but you can see it. And when you see it, you know. Look, I, I look at a piano and I see white and black. Things <laughs> yeah. and black, but I can look at horses and, and for some you reason, know the, you know, you just have a flow and a feel. And uh, been lucky to make a passion into a career. And... Uh, keeping it moving but you know I learned to read at the racetrack with the daily racing forum and the blood horse magazine yeah, not in school really. so that's a good memory as a childhood uh, you know people would line up like a little circus act and say what was it what did that say I'd say Angel Cordero <laughs> <laughs> I'd say Eddie Maple <laughs> and how how do you know that because I would ask and I would associate sounds with shapes right which were the jockey names yeah yeah and off I went and I had a beautiful childhood I got to see John Henry run really I got to see Slew a gold run I got to see Caveat win the Belmont. 
I got to see Swale win the Derby. Wow. So my comic book superheroes were not Superman and Batman. They were these horses. <laughs> so, so that dream was from way back to start with. And uh, just so I don't embarrass you, I'm going <laughs> to tell all the viewers. And he did win the Kentucky Derby 2023. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's amazing. I mean, what a feeling. I mean, tell us on, tell, tell us your story on, you know, you felt him, you saw him, you felt him, you... You know, give give us a start. Well, there's uh, the first aspect is you know is the, the horse itself, right? Yeah. Um, and how you picked him? How we picked him? You know, going to the sales uh, with Gustavo Delgado Jr. and you know we we worked together in tandem for the last few years. Um, we don't necessarily have the budgets that a lot of other uh, buyers are blessed with, so we've always had to be a little more resourceful, find some angles, right. uh, zig when people zag a little bit. And I have a saying: uh, it's better to be the head of a of a mouse than the tail of a lion. <laughs> so yeah, when, that's good. when I when I go, I've always chased first season sires. I, I say to myself, they're always going to get the biggest support from the from the stud farms. Right if they're really being supported properly by true organizations, the Hill and Dales, the Stone Street Farms that are gonna, you know, the Coolers that are gonna give real quality mares to these horses. Right. And in this instance, Good Magic, um, they sent in Puka, who was owned by Donegal Racing, yeah. and she was a legit, talented filly. Mm -hmm. She broke her maiden, her, she won first time out by 16 lengths, uh, had an unlucky trip in the Breeders' Cup and in the Kentucky Oaks. And I knew she was talented. Yeah, yeah. So, just off the page, I was so familiar with the with just the, the family. The yeah, you know. And um, one of my biggest lessons is, we go to these sales and we look at thousands of horses, and the majority of them, unfortunately, aren't top level. You know, right. They're just they just, just horses, to be average, yeah. churning in horses. But the stallion farms in Kentucky, they have all the champion horses. The top. Those are the real ones. Yeah. So I go to my education, going to look at these stallions at the stallion shows and see. What do these things have? What yeah, what made them special? Like. What inside and outside? What's their thing? And Good Magic is a horse that I had just freshly seen in the that previous spring. He was one of the you know I knew that his babies were about to start yeah. running and hit the two year old so so I went fresh Good Magic was fresh in my mind. I knew the the mother, Puka. And when I got to the sale and I saw this horse, I'm like, This is Good Magic, Magic. two point yeah. This is Daddy. Yeah. I mean, this is his son's yeah. uh this is his father. Image of his father. Yeah. A spitting yeah. image of his father. Yeah, and he was a beautiful yearling. And he was a good he, magic. You saw him there, yeah. Yearling, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, million dollar Mike Ryan yeah. yeah. purchase. So uh, that really struck a chord to me. The horse worked really well, and and he didn't switch leads properly in the breeze show. But if you saw the 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 gallop, the gallop on right. the hill, he switched leads at Timonium, which is that sh uh, the right. well, obviously it's the hard track. track. It's a hard yeah. track. He rebroke on the back stretch and wanted to almost go around again. And they were trying to wrangle him like a rodeo horse to stop him. And I was like, this thing is a machine. He's a monster. He's a monster. So those things all, you know, attracted to me. And um, he had what's called the parrot mouth. Yeah. Right. He was at home where right. he's had a huge overbite. And uh, luckily as a kid, there was a famous horse in Europe called Dancing Brave. He won the Ark and a bunch of huge races in England. And he had such a huge overbite. So being eight years old and seeing that, it was such a, it was almost cartoonish. Right, yeah. But you saw a famous horse having right. it. So I was never scared yeah, of that. Yeah, worry about that. And you looked at his flesh on him. I mean, it oh. looks like it didn't stop him from eating. Nope. That's for sure. Nope, he was a, a quality horse. And uh, when it was time to try to buy him, we only had a certain amount of money. So I started bidding and we went way past the number <laughs> that I knew. A little excitement we, in there. <laughs> <laughs> and I had uh, Gustavo in my ear on the earpiece telling me, come on, man, we love this horse, remember that. I'm like, you're, you're, you're right. So we just kept bidding, went up $100,000 over what we had. Really? And uh, got it signed done. the ticket, yeah. And uh, you know, from the moment he started, we gave him a little time off after the sale, but from the moment he started training, he showed a lot of uh, special qualities. He's a really smart horse, really intelligent horse. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, you, you can't teach a horse to be fast. No. And no. He, he was just a, a really fast horse that between his intelligence and listening to Gustavo Sr.'s uh, lessons right. uh, really could get the true mile and a quarter and, um, you know, took us to the Derby. No, it's, uh, I never forget watching you there, that, that, that <laughs> moment. For us watching you just hold that trophy and that was, <laughs> I mean, it gives chills. I mean, uh, that's, that's a dream for 
0.9% of the people in the horse industry. Yeah. Um, Maybe in the world. Oh. Forget about it. They're not even in the horse industry yet, but that would be their dream if they were in it. Look, anywhere you, anywhere I travel around the world, they'll say, uh, they stop you, what do you do for a living? Or what's that pin on your shirt? Or what's that logo on your ad? And I'm like, well, I work in horse racing. And they're like, oh, like the Kentucky Derby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or they say, have you ever won the Kentucky Derby? <laughs> and now, like, as a matter of fact, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I did. But, you know, aside from the historical aspect of it, from a personal point of view, being a son of horsemen, uh, from the moment I was cognizant, I could remember my two uncles who were trainers and my grandfather saying, we're going to lead one over. We're going to have one in the big race. Yeah. And unfortunately, my grandpa died. And my uncles are 78 and 82, uh, Louis Alvarez and Harold Alvarez. And they're like as old as the eighth pole at Belmont Park. <laughs> <laughs> and so you ended it for them. Look, when we qualified, I called my mom and I was like, Mom, I need you to call the, your brothers and tell them I'm taking care of everything, but they're coming to do this walk. Oh, and to see it. two guys retired at that age. And walk over. Doing the walk over so like much. children. Yeah. They were like kids. Yeah. Like realizing it. So all week when people were like, you must be, you know, nervous. You must be scared. You must be, you know, throwing up with the nerves. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like what I've been hearing for 40 years of my life That's has come happen. to fruition. Yes. And God willing, there's yep. an upstairs grandpa's looking down saying That's the kid right. did it for us yeah so it was i was at such peace yeah i could imagine uh, i just and then to, i can't imagine and, and then to have everybody there my my mother my two aunts two uncles my brother they were all there all of me in the box watching the race awesome. oh. so to have that experience and that and then to win and then to win it you know <laughs> and to win it you know and it would have been great just to have that experience yeah. with them even if you didn't win that. right just to be able to get there and, and get to that goal <laughs> yeah on that it, that just topped it off winning it but uh you know that's not the only great horse you've been around either <laughs> there's a few others that i know of <laughs> yeah. yeah no that it's, you've uh that we've helped been involved people by yeah, or, no it's been it's, it's been a wonderful experience i think uh my my first big horse for myself was uh as a yearling we bought structure for 160,000, yeah. and then we pin hooked him for 850,000. Yeah. And then a couple months later, he won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf, wow. and that all of a sudden yeah. says, wait a minute, I think- We can do this. We can <laughs> do this. And then, uh, you know, we bought um, a colt out of basic July, an Uncle Mo colt, and he ended up being multiple grade one placed, and, and you know, in the Copal, and in the Champagne, and Gulfport, and yeah. he ended up being sold to be a stallion, and you're like, all of a sudden, you're like, wait a minute, like, I think we I kind of know what's cooking. Yeah. And then, Last uh, last summer, there's these two guys, you know, Randy and Dean. They sell two-year-olds. <laughs> they had a really nice aggregate cold <laughs> that uh, breeze lights out, and we said to ourselves, "I think we're getting that 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 feeling in our belly again." And we were fortunate to buy him, and uh, as the fates would have it, the horses uh, really responded to. Let's knock on wood <laughs> to, all, to, to all the training and the and the, and the patience since. Uh, since the day we got him, right. and obviously, uh, you guys are in as as, as partners, and it's been uh, a sh it's short ride so far, but an electric one. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. I, can, yeah. I, I I just know one thing, Romero, is that horse has more will than any other horse I think we've ever been around. Right, Randy? Yeah. I mean, he has the will to do anything, and. Uh, it, it's not going to be his will to ever stop him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, no, that, and you know that's the number one ingredient that we need is is heart, the heart, fight, the will, the desire. Want. Yeah. And yep. when you're when you're in those deep in a in a heavyweight championship fight, those yep. deep rounds. Yep. That's when you need you know that kind of fight. And, and that's that what you have. It. Yeah. That's what we have every day in this having a search for that horse. We have the heart and the will to keep searching, yeah. and turn over every rock. Yeah. And for us. That's that's the fun of it. A hundred percent. That's why we grew up watching those Rocky movies. Yeah. And now, <laughs> and now we're applying it to real life, you know? Now, but it, it's it, it's an amazing game. It's an amazing industry. And it's it's awesome that we get to be a part of it on a day-to-day -day, um, basis. And platforms like this to being able to reach out so many people domestically, internationally, and kind of like giving people a little inside yeah. clue yeah. into our day-to-days on such a fascinating subject like, like thoroughbred horse racing, it's pretty awesome to, to, to have this. So thank you guys for having me. Oh, well, and you know, we love it because we really want to invite the world into something that has so much uh, 
uh, uh, what do I say, feeling and, and uh, inspiration. The passion. Uh, their yeah. passion. There, and they don't really know. I think there's probably a lot of people out there that think they would like it, but are a little afraid to maybe take the step yeah. and to come into it and don't know anybody or um, it's a little intimidating. Okay. I mean, you're standing amongst uh, people that have been very successful in business and life and things like that. And, and maybe they may be just a touch uh, uh, worried about having to mingle in there, but it's, it's a family. Yeah. Oh. It's, a, it's the biggest family in the world, the thoroughbred industry, yeah. is it not? Oh, oh, for sure. Listen, it's something that unites every continent and every country that has horse racing right. in common. Mm -hmm. We all speak horse. That's we it. all speak you horse. Know, we, we all speak that emotion and that, and that passion. I think the challenge is not just maybe being intimidated by from afar, but people not even knowing how to approach the right. entry into right. it. Right. And, and they have no idea. I, I mentioned this last week, the, the Thurban uh, Racing Commentary is a website that uh, out of Europe that uh, writes a lot and they do like a five question uh, piece. And they asked me, you know, what thing you wish you could change? And I said, you know, in America, not having an NFL, NBA office that not only has the obvious stuff like rules and regulations and, you know, uniformity across the board, but there's also an aspect of taking care of the current fans, taking care of the current horse players, developing new horse players, mm -hmm. developing new fans, the marketing of our sport, you know, bringing people in to show them the open arms that we have. Right. Exactly. The ability to even provide information. How can I buy a racehorse? Right. Right. How, where do I get licensed? Or can I buy part of one? Can I, if I can't how do I get afford in? a whole horse, how do I get down? Can I just take you know, 10% or 5% or everything. something? I just want to enjoy the ride. To enjoy the ride. And it, and it takes, since we don't have a parent company to do it, we have to take it upon ourselves yep. to, to create these platforms to say, hey, guys, come on in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, let's 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 have and, a uh, and we'll help you and we'll help you and yeah. and we'll ride the wave with you all the way through and through. That's the fun part. They really uh, love there. So you know, that's our mission for our podcast. Randy and I decided that we have had an amazing 32 year career. You know, we have very had, blessed. Yeah, very, very blessed. blessed. Eleven Derby contenders, uh, multiple winners in second and uh, and and horses on Derby Trail this year as well. Two of them. Uh, two of them, <laughs> which is amazing for us uh, there to have that. But, uh, you know, to, to try to say, hey, guys out there, you can do this too. For sure. Come on with us or come with anybody in the industry, somebody that you enjoy being with. I mean, is at this sale, there's 136 consignors with 800, is it? 800? 800. 800 yeah. horses. A lot of great horses. You know the champions here. Look, the, the, you, you know, the, the, there's champions at every every sale, yeah. and uh, somebody's gonna find you there. Yeah. You know, and uh, so this isn't just for Hartley Dorenzo or for Romero; it's for the industry. It it truly is, and yeah. uh, you know, being that providing this kind of platform to be that welcoming to people who are listening yeah. uh, to the podcast at at work or on their home on their drive. You know, it's. Uh, it provides them that opportunity. So. Yeah, it does. And, you know, of course, we, you know, we hope that they find somebody that is as successful as you are and the success find the Romero. Other people are. <laughs> yeah. And um, so that they can get it done right uh, there. That's that's what that's all, always our hopes on there. And, you know, they don't even know what it what it takes to, you know, there's a movie coming out and Randy and I, part of it's called The Making of a Champion. Amazing. And The Making of a Champion isn't buying a horse and going to the dirt. It's everything in between, <laughs> right? This podcast is made possible by the incredible support of our sponsors. We want to express our deepest gratitude to OBS Sales, More Play Racing, Spurs Chop House, Brooklyn Horse Transport, The Green Group Consultants, Advanced Equine Nutrition, Performance Equine Veterinary Care, Equine Innovative Performance Center, Accenture Insurance, and Mid-Florida Credit Union. Their commitment to excellence inspires us every day. Thank you for being the driving force behind this episode of the Leading the Way podcast. For more information on each sponsor, please check out our links in the description of this video. More Play Racing, a rising force in the world of horse racing, born from passion, forged with precision and relentlessness. More Play Racing sets the pace in the pursuit of victory. More Play Racing isn't just joining the race, we're reshaping it 
fueled by the collective strength of our dedicated team. Our commitment to excellence is grounded in our training, strategy, and determination, all with an unmatched frequency. Follow us on our journey at moreplayracing.com. I mean, <laughs> people, people on the outside, once they get a, a, a peek at that film and they, they see the, the steps, the A to Z, a it's to not just the Y and right. Z, it's it, the it, A it's to Z. With, with, with uh, Gustavo Jr. Sr. staying up all night with a yeah. horse because the horse may have a bellyache. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like it would be your kid or you know and not getting any sleep and what it what it takes to oh, yeah. do that and to know the care behind these horses you know if they were out in the wild they'd be more horses worse off than they are in the care of all these beings look the you the, know. the majority the the far majority of our of our industry loves these race horses treats them better than they treat themselves yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and um there's no two ways about it you know Showing people how much we care and love for our racehorses and look after them is is paramount, so that yeah. people truly understand the connection that we have with the horses. Now, for yourselves, for myself, yeah. I mean, these things mean everything. Look, I'll tell you this: in the late '90s, we had a horse called Commander Vivander. Yeah, and um, we were going through some, you know, tr you know troubled, tough times at home, and. Um, the only source of income that we had was Commander Evander. Really? And this horse won nine races, over 250,000 for us. And every race, we were sitting there on pins and needles because <laughs> it was like needing oxygen to breathe. <laughs> yeah. And it was yeah. Commander Evander yeah. who carried us yeah. through some really tough personal times in Han. And, um, Nothing else could have, you know, impacted and got us through those times like the racehorse did. So, and I think they know that. To be honest, I think your horses know what you're feeling every second, and they are so willing to help and 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 to give you 200 percent of whatever they have. Because, like, you know, if you treat them well, they treat you yeah. better. But they'll never say no if they're happy horses. Yeah, yeah. they're they, the most noble yeah. servants you can possibly think of. I mean they lay it down mm -hmm. and and that's and that, and that's you know the responsibility of every horse owner then to 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 that's give, right. give the horse to replicate you know reciprocate what he's giving to you mm -hmm. giving yep. it back you know yeah. what I mean and, and it's and and it's up to everybody to be that kind of to have that kind of responsibility well you have awesome trainers well we love those guys they, oh yeah they're um, amazing I'm sure you picked those from yeah. your heart yeah not just numbers right no 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 yeah. uh, it's a know, feeling it's a definitely yeah. You know, both Gustavo Sr. and Jr. are guys that I, I knew for several years uh, and really developed a, a, a great bond. And uh, when we came together professionally, we really sat down to make a, a, a plan of attack. Mm -hmm. and, you know, to start off, or everybody has to start at step one. Right. You know, with a, with a limited budget and say to ourselves, let's try to, you know, make something happen. And, and it's pretty awesome that by... You know, year three of our association, we were able to get together and win a race like the Kentucky Dirt. Yeah. And, you know, now it's onwards and upwards. And, yeah. You know. And it's not luck. Trust me, it's not luck. I mean, everything was meant to be, and I think it's blessings um, that that come to you. Um, I don't think there's there's uh, luck involved there. You know, I mean, it's hard work. You can call it luck if you'd like, for a lack of a better <laughs> word. But the truth of the matter is, the harder we work, the luckier we get. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, it, it just, uh, luck is when you buy a lottery ticket and you pick a number and there's 50 million of them. <laughs> Which I don't mind. I mean, <laughs> yeah, take off. a little look that way. <laughs> but uh, it is uh, all about what what goes into it. It's like you said, you have a plan and stuff. I mean, Randy and I, for 32 years, we still go to the sale with a plan in mind. You know, in, in this particular year of 2023 yearland sales, we said we want to go to Keeneland, um, and we want to buy the best uh, Justify Colt we can find and the best Tis the Law Colt we can find. Wow. And that's, you know, we thought that horse's racing Tis the Law was amazing. You know, he, he won races that uh, were incredible. Grade ones and winning by eight and nine. And it was through a tough time through Look. COVID. Yeah. Everything was really screwed up uh, where the Belmont was first and the Derby was later and so forth. Um, he should have won that Derby. <laughs> And he's, yeah, and his family is, you know, con constitution and tap it. I mean, it's all 
champion well, after champion after champion, just what you were talking about earlier, well, you know? Cole, you know, if you watch his, his resume, you know, and you go back and watch his races, I mean, his Travers and his Florida Derby were just absolutely Amazing, right? Right. It's like a electric races. Electric races. So, you know, we kind of take a look just like you did and have a plan, and we would, you know, follow our plan and try to find the best ones we can find that fit all our boxes, what we check off and what we're looking for. And um, we felt like we did uh, do that. And uh, yeah, we cross our fingers. I mean, we'll uh, know in a there. couple days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, and again, it, if you ask him, it's not about the money. <laughs> it's about the win. Yeah. Well, it's about the win. And when our horses do good, we won. Well, sure. Dean, I was going to ask, what's, uh, Randy, what's your favorite memory slash racehorse that you've been affiliated with in your 30 plus years? I would have to say probably Silver Child. Wow. You know, because I was riding and galloping horses and actually breathing horses at the time, you know, when we were selling it then. Yeah. You know, we didn't have breeze riders to say it was the guys off the farm that was breathing. And I was the breeze rider at the time. And what, what, what <laughs> that was a hundred pounds ago. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what was it when you were when you were when you were riding him that you felt underneath you know, that? It was, that was a, that, that gave you that. You know, he had just an awesome way of moving, but it was just his whole demeanor. <laughs> I could get on him in the stall with no saddle, no bridle, no nothing. Wow. You know, he was just and actually Bob Baffert even made got on him, so if Bob can get on him. No you way. know he was smart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bob wrote him. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah. 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 He was just a cool, um, just a really smart. You know, it's, 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 it's a lot mental with these horses, too. They have to have the brain to be able to go and take yeah. all of the stuff, like at the Derby where there's just so many people, and it's just, you know, you hope you just get in the gates and everything gets out good and, oh. you know, you can finish good, but... Look, at, in all sports, you can go to the gym and shoot hoops and not miss, right. but go put yourself <laughs> exactly. in the NBA in the arena <laughs> yeah. with 20,000 yeah. fans screaming, your team's down by two. Yeah. It's a whole different ball game. It is. Uh, so for me, training horses, it's always been as much mental as it is physical. Sure. You know, I always go on a tread. My horses, I figure happier horses and healthier horses give you everything. And um, I've always, that's always been my program. I drive Dean insane. Yeah. I, I never let them. Slow and easy. Slow Are you going to push this horse yeah. along? Just give me a little time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, horses that are just natural, natural athletic, they can just naturally do it. You yeah. know, and if you try to push horses that aren't as natural as you try to make them be, you know, that's when horses start becoming unhappy. So I've always just tried to, you know, my horses are all treated like they're all champions. Yeah, so. we never let them disappoint us. No. Don't push them to a point where you'd be disappointed in them because they're not ready to right. be to that point. I've so never, never let stop watching the whole time I've it's trained horses. It's all just how the horses do it. And I tell Dean, I can only get them ready to feel as good on the day they need to perform. I can't make them do anything that they can't possibly do. Wow. That's a great philosophy. Yeah. And the Silver Charm year would, would be your best memory? Is another one. <laughs> you know what? I'd have to say that year we came right here to this sale and we bought two horses. This is crazy, Romero. Now, again, we were like you, very small budget. The <laughs> fact is, we weren't even sure if we could pay what we did pay for them. And we bought two horses, Silver Charm and Stormy Blues, for the exact same money, $16,000 each. Mm -hmm. What's the chance of that, right? Come on. And uh, both champions. Yeah? yeah? Both champions. He was a two-year-old uh, Florida Red champion, uh, beat Flanders, grade one winner, wow. matron. Uh, Unbelievable, and Silver Charm running the same time. Uh, so, you know, the, those were horses that we really had to watch, make sure that these were what we felt were the right horses. Uh, you know, for, because we had no money. They, <laughs> if we were going to mess up, we were done. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we had a business, so to speak, you know? You're like poker all in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With all the chips. Yeah. Yeah. Funny is, uh, is Silver Charm is out of a poker mare. <laughs> <laughs> you know? As he would have. It, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. It's like poker all in. Uh, have, yeah. you, have, have you guys been overseas to Europe or, or, or South America ever to to check out the like the stock over there or to the races over there please like no that. we have never been uh, been invited my, a lot my ultimate goal would be to go i'd love to go see um ireland 
I want to go see what Cool Moore is and see oh. Aiden and how he trains. He wants to train with Aiden. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just to see, you know, there's to me that's so, the horsemanship there is just amazing. And I've seen videos and I watched the little thing at Cool Moore that they have. And if I was wanted to, had a choice to go somewhere, that would be where I'd To be Ireland. Yeah. Uh, you told me you just have been five, four or five countries. Oh, you know, when I was, uh, for as much as sports and everything that I played, I loved to read as a kid. And uh, maybe it started out because I would read the, those American Racing Almanacs, The Blood Horse, and The Thoroughbred Times. So when I was 12, my uncle gave me a book by an author called Dick Francis. It was called A Jockey's Life, Lester Piggott. And I read that thing cover to cover, and obviously Lester Piggott was like the Will, Sh Will Shoemaker, right. Angel Cordero of Europe. Right. Uh, and reading it was so fascinating because not only did it did the book talk about his personal life, but it talked about all the amazing horses. Each chapter was dedicated to another incredible horse that won oh, that's all the big be awesome. races in Europe. Yeah. So here you are, 12 years old, and it's like you're learning about Larry Bird and Magic Chance <laughs> yeah. and Michael Jordan, but of Europe. Right. That this guy, Lester Piggott, this rider, rode, and he's going into detail about the races and the backstory behind these horses and... Uh, in the, in, he had just retired for the first time, and in the at the back of the book, it had an index of all the countries that he had traveled to and won races in. So not only was it just England, France, and Ireland, right. he had ridden in India and in like wow. Asia and then the, like in Indochina, and you're like, there's racing in all <laughs> right, this. right. Mind you, you're 12, right? right. So the impact right. of that. Hey, I'm 64, and I say <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> so all that kind of was just like was programmed in my mind that as I started getting older and following European racing you just got hooked on the like how we have our traditions of the triple crown and right. Travers and the two-year-old races you know champagne and the hopeful and you know races have been running in America for 100 plus years yeah you see it in Europe and uh, it just fueled that interest as a fan to say who's winning these races this year who are the big sires over there. And um, the minute I got to a position in my career uh, in horse racing to be able to go over there, I jumped at the first chance to say, wait, yes. go over there see and, it. and you see it. You read about it, now you want to see it. Now I want to see it. So since 2017, I've been going to Europe and just plucking out one or two horses a year. And then the other year, then like two years ago, I picked up three horses, last year four horses. So it's cool that. And they're racing there. Uh, they're racing there, and some have come over here. I had a, a you know a, a listed filly. A kid that I bought a, a, a filly, and she became a listed filly in America in Saratoga, which was pretty cool. A daughter of Expert Eye that won uh, the Breeders' Cup Mile here for Judmont. Oh yeah. And it's just really cool being having access to those pedigrees that you don't really you know see down here in America. And as you know, our grass program is booming. Yeah, it is between you know Naira's puts a series together. Kentucky Downs has a great program. Oh my and, gosh. Uh, um, a lot of them take to the poly track and Jeffrey's yeah. got great prizes. So, you know, it's such a popular thing, turf racing. It's it's really up and coming. It's up turf has more, really yeah. changed a lot here. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And, and just the past four years, yeah. it's, I mean, well, used to be you had to wait six, eight yeah. weeks, maybe longer to find another race for your horse because yeah. Oh, yeah. they didn't ride them. Yeah. Now there's races written every everywhere. day, everywhere. Oh, yeah. You know, and uh, you have Bob Baffer winning grade ones on the on, on the turf. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> <this> <laughs> How about that? Yeah. The kill row. Uh, so yeah. for myself, I'm like, it's the combination of my passion of travel, my passion of international racing, and, and luckily, no wife, no kids, no girlfriend. Being a playboy, <laughs> I can go travel a little bit. You know what I mean? Have some fun over there, and at the same time, expose myself to these markets. Yeah. Go see the yeah. horses. Go yeah. see the races. That's awesome. And meet people. Like we were, we were talking about this off air. The world is so small. Right. With technology, with the advent of these digital sales, even these sales that we're having in person have a digital component of you putting up pictures and videos right. online exactly and yeah. everywhere and everyone is participating it's, yep. it's pretty amazing and um for as fantastic as that is i wanted to champion myself because in the end nothing beats facetime with someone right, i could right. text with That's you right. i could vote, say right. voice notes. that handshake that look in like the eye because you'll feel my passion yeah. man yeah, right. look in the face you'll see right. like this right. kid really means yep. means well and wants to do something and 
those, you know, we talk about, we were just mentioning now about how it's the intimidation factor. There are people internationally who would also love to participate here, but they're also questioning, well, who do I buy with? Right. How do I get involved? And I'm like, I want to be your blood stock agent. I want to be your, your racing manager. I want to help you with that transition into American, into the American racing. So going over there, I've been to uh, Qatar, I've been to Bahrain, I've been to Saudi Arabia, I've been to Dubai, Ireland, France, England, uh, Argentina, Uruguay, Chile, and I sold a couple stallions to Japan. So I've done business in 13 Everywhere. countries, <laughs> and uh, you know, push it to the limit. We're, and we're, did we're, all we're the way. Rolling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I love it. And um, so where do you want to be? Let's just say you're my age. <laughs> That's a long way away. Yeah. Where do you want to get to? Where, where do you want to be? Um, I mean, you've really reached the top. Yeah, exactly. So many where do things. you go from the I derby? I mean, where do you go? <laughs> you know, the you know, derby again. <laughs> you know what's funny was I was at uh, I when I when I showed up in 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 England this December, there was a, a bloodstock agent there, an older gentleman, and he goes. Rivera, you won the Derby. You can retire now. And I was like, what? I'm just getting started. Yeah, yeah. You know? Scratching the surface. No, look, there, there's still... The World Cup would be awful. Oh, man. <laughs> I, look, I, I just... I don't want... I just want to... He were like, you can't do business in every country. And I'm like, why not? You know, I, yeah. I, I, I... One, I'm respectful of the horsemen there. I love to do things in partnership because nothing, you know, for myself, celebrating as a team... Uh, is a fantastic feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And being able to, to get together and create trade and business and make the game uh, one whole international mix. That's what I want to do. I, I want to be uh, an American connection, a bridge for us well, to, you are. To, yeah. to as many you cultures are. You as are. possible. So you just keep that keep that rolling. That, that's what I want to be. You know. That's what All I want right, to well, that, And hopefully win some abroad. So I, can, I can stand here and talk with you all night long. I mean, <laughs> exactly. it just feels so comfortable and great. <laughs> but we actually have a time limit. So we've got to kind of cut this a little bit short. And um, I want to thank you for thank you so taking the time out Come on. And, and talking to us and talking to our, our, our viewers and our listeners. And uh, if you like what you yeah. hear, what you like us on, on uh, Instagram and, and join with us on uh, YouTube and subscribe to our podcast. This is Leading Away with Hartley Dorenzo, Randy Hartley, Dean Dorenzo, and I'm not going to say Ramirez. <laughs> <laughs> Romero. <laughs> Respreto. Respreto. You always Respreto. got it. You always got it. <laughs> On that. Well, I just call you Romero. You <laughs> On that. Awesome, Thank you very Thank much. Thank you guys for having Thank me, you. man. Great chatting with Thank you guys. You, I doubt about it. Take care. I'd like to take a moment and thank today's sponsor, Haggard Pharmacy. If your horse is struggling from ulcers from time to time, they've got some good news for you. Reline GI by Haggard has a new and improved formula, and scientific studies show that it definitely improves gut health. So what's new about Reline GI is made with a new beta glucan that stimulates the immune system to work on targeted areas of horse's stomach. Plus, there's also a new price that can save you nearly $100 a gallon. Visit Resolve It dot com r-e-s-o-l-v-e-t dot com to learn more about the new reline gi a link will be in the description of this video